Hey guys, this is Vivek Bhavishi, aka that API guy. And this is part three of the AI Builder video series where we build the object detector um, into a canvas app. Sorry guys, I'm just getting a text from my wife. So as you saw, I could use the object detector model to detect three of the items, um, but I need to detect one more now. So we'll build a new AI model just for that one item, just so that I can show you the whole uh, building the AI model from scratch and putting it into a Canvas app. So let's get started. <music> we build the canvas app let's um, we need to build an entity um, so if you are not used to the entities world or CDS um, you for the AI model or for the object director uh, AI model you definitely need to use CDS and um, CDS I mean if you're not aware it's the common data service of Microsoft where it's basically a relational database that you can use um, if, you, if you can create a separate kind of preview environment or uh, uh, the community, or you can subscribe to the community plan and can set up a, a separate database if you already don't have access to CDS. So if you have to test it out, you can do that even today. And um, as of today, it's only enabled in US and uh, Europe. So if you want to build an environment, a preview environment, better select that these two regions so that you can use the AI builder. All right, so let's create our entity. And this is the uh, entity that we need to use um, to, to save the name of the object and um, any other details that we want to save about it. So I'll create a new entity and let's name it cosmetic i already have one so cosmetic demo and uh, we'll keep the name as name click on create there you go it it's as easy as that you just created an entity uh, now you can add more fields basically those are your columns um, in any table so I'll add a field because what I want to do is uh, instead of just recognizing the name I also want to add like a product type and another thing that uh, I'll add is the ASIN number now this is because I want to uh, be able to add the items to my Amazon cart so that I can directly order it from there and to add it to the Amazon cart, I need the ASIN number um, uh, for that product. So I'll click on done, save entity. All right, so my entity has been created with these three, um, I would say attributes. And then um, I need to enter some data into it so that we can then start building the AI model around it. So I'll click on edit data in Excel. That's the easiest way to uh, enter some data into the entity. So we'll open that. And there you go. 
go. So that's my entity. I need, or that's the Excel table for that entity. And then I can click on enable editing. It'll try to log me in. I'm already logged in. If you have multiple accounts and if you have the CDS entity on some other account, make sure that you sign out and sign into the uh, tenant where uh, you have uh, this uh, CDS uh, table created. So uh, this item is called Jade Roller. I don't know what the hell is that. <laughs> uh, the product type is uh, it's a natural stone massager. Again, no clue. And the is SIN number. So for that, I already searched for it on Amazon. This is the product. Uh, generally, it's there after in the URL. So I can just copy it from here and go back to my Excel and paste it in here. This will help me create a URL, that I, um, basically help me to uh, add it to the Amazon card. And you'll see that later in the demo. Okay, so once I have added this, I just need to click on publish over here. And that's it. It has been added, this data into the entity. So we'll go back and check here. So under the entity, there's a data. Um, tab over here, I can click on that. And you see it has already uh, added that. Now it doesn't show me the other fields uh, for that. I need to go on the top right corner over here, select all fields, and then it shows me the name, the ASIN number, uh, and all other fields as well, the product type here. Okay, so uh, we have now created our entity. The next thing that we need to do is to build our AI model. So we'll go on this AI builder, build, and I'll select the object detection. We'll name it uh, again, cosmetic uh, uh, wipes, more cosmetics. Now, technically I would have added uh, this to my existing model, but just to uh, show you from scratch how to do it, I'm creating a separate model. So the first thing that I need to do is select object names. Now, what does that mean? So uh, this is uh, where we need to select our entity that we just created. So I'll click on select object names. It shows me all the entities on the right hand side. And I'll select, uh, let's search for, what was it, cosmetic demo. Um, uh, so you can see the three fields it shows. The field that we want to use is the name. Uh, we want to detect the name, not anything else. Um, so select field and it shows me Jade Roller. Now, if it had multiple ones, it will show me multiple uh, values over here. And then I, I need to add 15 images for each of them. So when you're creating your first model, if you don't want to input like hundreds of images, try to keep your initial number less. I would say start with one or two just to test it out. So I'll just select this, click on next. So, I mean, on the right hand side, it kind of shows you all the steps required. So um, what images uh, should I add and how to improve the performance? So. We are going to use only 15 images in this video. However, the recommendation is to use 50 images. That's where your model, um, the AI model is more kind of perfect, near to 100%. Um, you can only add JPEG, PNG and BMP images. Um, and if you need, if you want to understand more documentation, you can click on the documentation. It's still in the initial phase. so. Um, what do we talk about today more or less covers the whole part of the documentation. So we'll start adding images now. Click on add images. Now I already took a bunch of images for this and I took like different backgrounds. So I am going to select all of these. 
uh, click on open and uh, and you see I tried to select different types of backgrounds this trade roller moved all over my apartment today so so 17 images that should be enough to start off the model and it's done all the images have been uploaded um, I'll click on close so it says I've added 17 images uh, I can click on next uh, one thing to um, know here is if you don't have um, at least 15 images per the number uh, the number of tags that you have it won't let you go into the next screen so make sure you have 15 images um, for each of the tags so now we'll start tagging so I'll show you one or two and then we will take it faster from there. So I can select, uh, okay. So I, it already kind of detects the model. I didn't have to even kind of make the square on myself uh, or by myself. And then I can select controller um, click on next and this one okay so now we'll just follow and that's done I have tagged 16 images out of the 17 and uh, one of them was pretty blurry so I didn't want to use it so we'll click on next now uh, the only thing that we need to do now is to train the model so you can see over here um, we've added some images tagged some of them and then what we need to do is just train so let's uh, hit on train and the model is training. It might take a few minutes or a minute maybe to the model to train. So we will go and uh, start building our canvas app. So we first go to models. Um, you can see some of the models that I already created. The, the one which we just made, the wife's more cosmetics is still uh, training right now. Okay, so the model has been trained now, so we will click on that. So it says 91% accuracy. I was expecting that because it's just one object and uh, we didn't kind of have it with multiple objects. Uh, but it should be good enough to detect it or not, so we can try it. Um, but before that, uh, to sh so it shows you the number of images you added, the number of objects you have, and then before you use it, you need to hit publish. So only when you hit publish, it publishes the model for you to use in Canvas apps. If you don't, it stays here and you can't use it. Um, so we click on publish and it's trying to publish. And while it does that, um, what? so the reason why you have this is you can actually create a new version of this and uh, I should have waited for it to publish but um, what it shows is you can actually add more images and also um, if you already uh, if you probably had more tags that you wanted to add um, you can do that in your entity first and then uh, add it over here so we will for now, we'll just uh, go back, we'll just say save and close. Um, go here, now it says you have an open draft, so you can either keep it or uh, discard it. So as you can see, it already published. So when it's published, it says live. Um, so any live training, I uh, mean live AI models are the ones that you can use. So let's go and build our Canvas app so that we can test it. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is insert, um, click on this AI builder, 
drop down, click on object detector, and it should come up uh, here in a second or a few seconds. All right. We had the model here with us. We make it a bit bigger. Okay. Now, so on the right hand side, as you can see, it already shows the, the different AI models that you can connect it to. So the one that you want to use is Vive Small Cosmetics. Okay. So now it shows kind of, uh, okay, you can click on detect and uh, uh, try to detect. So we'll first just try to detect it using some image. So we'll click on detect. And we just use one of the more uh, images that we already had to see if it's able to detect at least that. And there you go. It detected it as the jade roller, and that that's how the I mean <laughs> the demo kind of uh, works. Um, so um, the on, this is not the only thing. We probably I mean we want to have some more interaction with this and do something with this data. So what? Uh, let's see how you can access some of the data from this image. So click on insert gallery or uh, actually data table and before we do that if i think i mentioned in the other video as well uh, but there is a way to use uh, an enhanced data table so enable so there is an experimental option where you can select to um, have an improved data table control selection and value property so we'll insert the data table I'll move it a bit below. Um, and for this, what we want is um, object detector one dot vision objects. And that's it. Um, that's the variable. I mean, that basically stores the data from the object detector. So we want the display name and the count, not the ID. So we click on add and it should show up. Yep. So that kind of shows you the, uh, the name and the count. Now, as I told you, I, I want to be able to add it to my cart in Amazon. So how do I do that? And, uh, the reason why we are doing this kind of, uh, additional part of this demo is what is the business use case around it? I mean, you can detect something that's cool, but how do I actually use it in my business? So I see this as an opportunity where you can create an AI model with all the products that you have and everybody in the company or the sales guys uh, have the app with, with them. They uh, probably don't know the product very well. They just click on a photo and uh, count the I mean it will count the number of products it will um, it can send an order through connected to any of your I mean internal system the order management system or or even a SharePoint list where you can create the orders and if you want to use it for personal use you probably want to add it to your Amazon card so we'll uh, try to do that over here um, so I'll cl insert a button now one of the things which I don't generally don't like is this theme. So we'll change the theme theme to the office blue. Just looks a bit better. Um, click on insert button. This will be your way to add the item to the Amazon cart. Now, in this case, we only have one product. So I need to look up the URL now. So the URL that I need to use to be able to add, you can Google it up, but I will have this added over here. Um, 
So this is the URL that you need uh, to add it to cart. And what we'll do is ASIN.1 equals um, oops. Okay. That is uh, so we look up the uh, data table or the uh, yep data table one or actually so we need to look up our entity that's and I need to add that entity first. So we'll go and click on data sources because I want to look up the ASIN number for that um, product. For that, I need to add the entity. So it's a common data service connector and that's a premium connector. So again, you probably need, if you don't have a P2 license, you need a, either a trial plan um, or you need the community plan when I, mean, I say trial, it's the preview environment or the community plan. Hmm. Oh, cosmetics demo. Okay, cosmetic demo. Connect. Okay, I have the entity connected now. So we'll. Uh, it's called cosmetic demos. Um, so what we need is to be the, the name should equal. And because in this case, only one product, I'm just gonna do some hack over here so that I just want the first product's uh, name. So data table. Um, First data table dot oops data table one dot come on I guess I need to use the collection or data table one dot yeah let's just use the either I need to add it to a connect um, the collection before or I I can't use the data table directly my bad dot uh, display name. So uh, this will give me the ASIN number. So I need to put a dot ASIN. And uh, so that's the ASIN number. And the other thing that I need to add is um, the quantity, quantity dot one, and that should be in quotes. Quantity dot one equals and and that's uh, gonna be the count. Um, just to make it simple here, we'll uh, just put it as one for now and put a closing bracket. Uh, change the name of this to order on Amazon. Let's uh, change the color a bit. Okay. And so I'll play this now. Click on order on Amazon. Opens the URL. It shows me the product here. I can just click on continue. And it's added to my cart. Can click proceed to check out and order it. You saw how I added that uh, item to the Amazon cart. So basically you can have a bunch of items in your entity with the ASIN numbers. Um, if you do sell on Amazon, you can um, get access to the Amazon's API, uh, the product advertising API, and then you can actually pull in the ASIN number just from the product name. So that's taking it a step ahead. Uh, so I don't need to add the ASI number uh, manually. Uh, I'll just show you the app that I built uh, that you saw in the initial demo. So this was the one that I built for checking multiple items. 
uh, the initial kind of cosmetic. So we will use one of these images here, which has three items in it. And it's processing. There you go. It detected all the three items. It shows me the the type of the product, the, the ASIN number as well, the quantity. Technically, I should be able to change it. So probably make that change over there. And then I click on order on Amazon. Uh, again, it will show me the items which I want to add to cart. Click on continue and it adds to my cart. Now this is, before I move into that, it, this is an advanced portion uh, where we'll try to explore the entities. So if you don't want to go into much deeper details about this AI uh, models, just end the video. But if you want to watch, uh, if you want to know more about how these AI models are working, um, stay tuned. So if you see in the entities, there are these entities. Um, so AI configuration, AI form processing document, AI model, uh, object detection image, image mapping, detection label, bounding box, all these stuff. So I thought, I mean, this is probably something that's being used for the AI model. So I built an app connecting to all these entities. And so you can see over here. So these are all the AI configurations that I created. And some of them were already built in. So I created the swag one. If I click on that. So the trained model is the one that I need to click, not the published one. Um, so these are all the AI configurations in the configurations entity. It might take uh, a minute before it loads. Okay, so as you can see over here, uh, yeah, the boxes should load up, yep. So the only thing that I couldn't find uh, are, is the actual, where is the actual image being stored? What is the ID for that? Or what's the blob storage URL for that? So these are all the thumbnails and uh, the bounding boxes are basically kind of percentage of either the height or the width, that's how it's stored. So we'll quickly go and look at the uh, bounding box um, entity, click on data and click all fields. And as you can see, it shows me all the images over here um, that I've added. And it shows me the height and percentage uh, left is where the uh, bounding box is starting from the, the zeroth, kind of on the X axis and uh, the top, there's a top field as well. So there's a width and I'm pretty sure there's a top as well. Just can't find it here. Yeah, there you go, top. So top is how, um, how, how like the distance from the Y axis on the top. So if this is kind of your, I mean, why am I doing this crazy thing here? Let me just go to the app. Uh, so this is basically the left. This is the top portion. Um, this is the height and the width. So I can show you the formula quickly over here. So this is my rectangle that I created. Uh, okay, yeah. So these are the formulas basically. Um, percentage so this is basically yeah I should have changed the image one underscore one oops dot uh, what is it the the x so uh, with into yep so uh, that's how I'm kind of doing this um, so yeah you can see basically the idea that I want to show here was so each of the um, images are basically st stored in this entity called AI object detection images. Um, and for all the images, you do some kind of mapping, you kind of train the image with uh, the boxes, 
kind of the uh, the bounding boxes. So each, so these all these entities are related. The object detection images is just all the images that you upload. But if you're mapping that to some AI model, it's mapped. I mean, so it goes into this entity from there. And then for each of the image mappings, so each of these image mappings, um, you need to have like a bounding box for the different objects within that image. So as you can see here, I have two images, uh, basically two items. So it shows me two bounding boxes. Uh, I'll show you one where I have like multiple different types of images. Only it comes up. Uh, yeah. uh, let me choose another one. The other the cosmetics one which we were building. Okay. takes a while to load yeah this one now because I have the thumbnail and not the actual image the boxes are a bit uh, it's skewed uh, but you, you I mean you get the idea here like what's happening how is this model actually working um, object detection has images image mappings uh, build bounding boxes and labels and everything is related to each. Uh, so images are all the images that you upload. If you map it to a model, AI model, it goes into image mappings. And then from there, um, you kind of select that box for each of the image. So that goes into the bounding boxes. And then for each of the bounding boxes, you are assigning a label to it. So that's the label, there's a separate labels entity. And each of the image mappings, as I told you, it's kind of to an AI configuration, not even a model. Uh, so each AI model has multiple configurations. So you can see over here, um, that you can see multiple kind of the, the same name repeating. So these are the different configurations uh, a trained configuration, a published configuration, and a draft configuration. So, um, so your models are basically just one of each. Um, so wife cosmetics would be just one AI model, but it has multiple AI configurations. And then that AI configuration has multiple images. So it's all kind of connected. So I was actually thinking of building the whole kind of AI builder, probably in Power Apps, I was not able to do that. So um, <laughs> if you got too excited, that's not happened yet. Um, it's just because I'm not able to find the image exactly how to, um, the actual image, wherever we upload it, where does it get saved? Um, so the, I just wanted to show you one thing though before I kind of end this video is that um, if I go on to one of the models, um, and I'll click on this as cosmetics. This one was actually 100%. Um, I'll click on resume draft. Next over here. Uh, the images, tag images. Now this is where I was trying to kind of like find the ID. So I clicked right click on this, clicked on inspect and found that each of these images are basically some blob storage uh, with this ID. But the ID which it shows here, I was not able to find that in any of the entities. So I don't know if this is being stored somewhere else, um, how to find this ID. So if you get to know about it, let me know in the comments. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to know about the other uh, AI builder capabilities, the links to those videos will be around here. Um, the next video is about the form processor, so do check it out. And if you missed out the video on the business card scanner, that's the video 
before this. So that's the part two of this series. All right, I hope you enjoyed the uh, AI Builder video series and uh, do subscribe to my channel if you want to stay updated about the new things and power apps and flow. And follow me on Twitter at that underscore API underscore cat. Thanks for watching.